uh, we got the local Ford fertilizer ordinances that have been adopted by Pinellas County, the city of St. Petersburg, city of Tampa, and really dozens of other cities throughout Pinellas County, the Tampa Bay area, and throughout all of Florida that regulate the use of fertilizer. To say that you can't use uh, nitrogen and phosphorus on your lawns uh, during the summer months when we have a very rainy season and those fertilizers would wash off into our waterways and make them toxic for producing red tides and other um, green slime uh, that can be harmful to animals and to people. Uh, so for that reason, we're asking the legislature to back off, let our local government leaders do what's best for the people in their communities. Uh, and to speak on that point, I want to turn to Commissioner Susan Latvala, uh, for who's a Pinellas County Commissioner and one of our leaders uh, for clean water in the state of Florida. Thank you, Frank. Um, Pinellas County passed this ban uh, to help save our taxpayers money, most importantly. It's certainly the right thing to do. Protecting the precious resource of water throughout the state is a responsibility of every single citizen. By removing, um, by not allowing uh, fertilization during the rainy season, we are saving taxpayers money uh, and not causing any harm whatsoever um, to people's lawns and, and landscape plantings. We are literally spending tens of millions of dollars a year in Pinellas County cleaning up the waterways. We have to abide by EPA standards. Uh, of course we do that. And next year we have to clean up those waterways again and the year after that. And as long as this cycle keeps repeating itself, the taxpayers will continue to pay. And uh, we believe very strongly that it is the right of local governments to make these decisions. Um, the fertilizers, that are harmful in this area may not be harmful in other parts of the states. It's our decision locally, should be our decision locally, to determine what is in the best interest of keeping our waterways clean and protecting the taxpayers from uh, having to pay repeatedly uh, for the same cleanups. Thank you very much. Okay. And next I'll turn to Kathy Harrelson. Uh, Kathy is the uh, Florida coordinator of the Gulf Restoration Network. And uh, Kathy, why don't you, we should spell our names. Kathy, why don't you spell your name and last name? Okay, Kathy, C A T H Y, Harrelson, H A R R E L S O N, Florida organizer, Gulf Restoration Network. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to add um, uh, on to what uh, um, Frank and uh, Commissioner Latvala have said in that one of the one of the issues certainly this this was done over a long period of time. We vetted this thoroughly in Pinellas and really in all the communities where we have worked on these ordinances. And uh, the goal, of course, always was to protect water. And what we found is it protects water and it protects our wallets, as as uh, Commissioner Latvala had said. Um, what we've also found as a, as a side benefit here is, uh, and this is, this is information provided by Pinellas County Watershed Management Division, that in January of 2010 in Pinellas County, before the rainy season nitrogen ban when was adopted, only 2% of lawn fertilizers were Florida-based company products at a local Home Depot. Uh, a year later, after the Pinellas ordinance was implemented, over 70% of lawn fertilizer Fertilizers were Florida-based company products in that same Home Depot. That, th these are Florida companies who are doing the right thing for Florida. The, the jobs are in Florida. The money stays in Florida. It's exactly what we need to be doing to protect our jobs here and also protect our waterway, which is, you know, jobs, uh, water equals jobs in Florida. So uh, uh, we, we would certainly urge the legislature to vote no on... Uh, House Bill 421. Thank you. Okay, and I think I'll, I'll add one other thing. Um, you know, I, I just want to say that the Florida legislature needs to leave the counties and cities alone, do their job to protect public health and protect our waterways. Uh, they, they, they live in a world where they're listening to high-paid lobbyists, 
uh, from uh, the industries they're supposed to regulate. And it's really our county commissions and our city councils that do the job to protect people in the state of Florida. The legislature needs to let them do their job and not interfere. We need clean water now, uh, and we need to uh, allow these fertilizer ordinances that our counties and cities have passed uh, to move forward so we can have a healthier environment and reduce these harmful algae outbreaks uh, that have made life miserable for many Floridians. Do you also have an opinion on House Bill 639, I believe it is, the reclaimed water bill? Oh, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> We do, yeah, but I, I don't there's know. There's an that, opinion, yeah. and and really, it, it, when you look at the activities of the legislature this year, it, it's it seems that there is a, a war on water, and citizens need to be aware of all of those water bills that are are uh, coming in front of the legislature this year. HB 639 is one of them, as is HB 421, and I'm going to say 1073 is, is another. There are. Terrible. There are several. Uh, the, the quantity, it, it, it affects quantity, it certainly will affect quality, but um, it's something we all need to pay attention to. Uh, look, I, I mean, our basic view, and this is 